Hello, 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 and welcome to our midweek service. We are excited to have you here with us tonight. I can tell you that there is a preacher of the hour who is coming through with a word that you are definitely going to want to hear. Now, I'm not going to be before you long. Just have a few reminders. If you want to stay connected with the church, don't forget that you can follow us on social media. What does that mean? You can connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can also like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and you can follow the YouTube channel. That way, if there's any new recordings posted, if there's any live services, you can connect with them all through that manner and get live up to date notifications. Now, we are preparing for our tithes and offerings. Let us recite together the consecration of the tithes and offerings. Dear Father, may thy love abound toward us as we now bring to thine altar this our gift. Help us that we may not give our money as a necessity, nor grudgingly, knowing that God loves a cheerful giver. We ask thy blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Please view the four ways of giving on the screen. You can go to our website at shilohbc.org forward slash give. You can text give to 301-321-8801 or you can mail in or drop off your tithes and love offerings at the church. If you have any questions, you can contact treasurer at shilohbc.org. Now I know that you are ready for me to move out the way so that you can hear this dynamic preaching. So after the musical selection, you will hear the preach word from one of our very own ministers of the gospel. Amen. We come to lift up the name of Jesus this morning. We love to praise him because he's so worthy. Yes, he's so worthy yes, to be praised. Hallelujah. Amen. I love to praise him. I love to praise Him. I love to praise His name. I love to praise Him. I love to praise His name. Oh, I love to praise His holy name. I love to praise Him. I love to praise His name. I love to praise Him. I love to praise His name. To praise him. I love to praise his name. Oh, I love to praise his holy oh, name. He's my rock. He's my rock. He's my rock. My rock, my sword and shield. He's a wheel. He's a wheel in the middle of a wheel. I know him never. I know him never. He'll never, never, never let me down. He's just a jewel.
Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. I give thanks to my pastor, Reverend B. Lewis Carleton, for allowing me to come before the people of God to bring the word of God. I thank God for the ministerial staff, officers, members, shallow family, and friends. My scripture reading will be coming from Luke chapter 17, verses 1 through 18, from the King James Virgin, after my prayer. Our God and our Father, I bless and praise your name. I, I give you all praise this morning. I give you all glory because you're awesome, God, Father God. I thank you, Lord, because you are so good to us, Father God. You allow us to see another day, and I thank you for that, Lord. I bless your name this hour, Lord, because you have allowed me to come before the people of God with the word that you was given to me for the people, O oh God. Father, increase me with the Holy Spirit. Speak for me and speak through me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Luke chapter 17, verses 1 through 18, King James Version. Then he said unto the, his disciples, it is impossible but that offenses will come, but woe unto him through whom they come. It were better for him that a milestone were hang about his neck, and he cast into the sea, that, that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourself. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he trespass again, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. And the apostles said unto the Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord said, if ye had faith as a grain of a mustard seed, ye might say unto the sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. But which of you, having a servant plowing or feeding cattle, will say unto him by and by, when he is come from the field, go and sit down to meet? And will not rather say unto him, make ready wherewith I may sip, and thyself and serve me till I have eaten and drunken, and afterwards thou shalt eat and drink. Doth he thank that servant because he did one the things that were commanded him I throw not? So likewise, ye when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. And if it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee, and as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten leopards men that were leopards, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourself unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine that they are not found, that return to give glory to God, save this stranger? This is the word of God. My sermon this evening, what really matters in our Christian walk with the Lord. What really matters in our Christian walk with the Lord? Point number one, forgiveness matters in our walk. 
Forgiveness matters in our walk. Point number two, faithfulness matters in our walk. Faithfulness matters in our walk. Point number three, thankfulness matters in our walk. Thankfulness matters in our walk. Luke is the 17th chapter of the Gospel of Luke in the New Testament of the Bible. It records the teaching of Jesus Christ and the healing of 10 lepers. The book containing this chapter is anonymous, but early Christian tradition uniformly affirmed that Luke the evangelist composed this gospel as well as the Acts of the Apostle. The New King James Version divides this chapter into four sections, hated respectively, Jesus warned of offensive, faith and duty, 10 lepers cleanse, the coming of the kingdom, commenting on the variety of topics covered in this first 10 verses. The terms are not merely picked or chosen by Luke from some outside source. Also, it, in this chapter, Luke recorded lessons that Jesus gave his disciples about some things that matters in a Christian life. So let us go to point one. Forgiveness matters in our walk. What is forgiveness? It is the act of excusing or pardoning others in spite of their slight shortcomings and errors. Forgiveness refers to God's pardon of the sins of human beings. By faith, sinners are forgiven. God's forgiveness of us demands that we forgive others also. Jesus warns his disciples about the sins in their life. And because we are called still in today's walk with the Lord, disciples, he is still warning us about our personal sins. Whether they are big or small, they are sins. And our sins causes us to stumble and offend the Lord. Yes, I know, church, that we are living in a sinful world, and we are going to sin, and it's very sad and unfortunate part of our life, but we still do it anyway because we are fleshly human beings. In verse 2, Jesus spoke about these little ones. He was not only talking about children, but he was also talking to the young believers that was learning how to follow him. Matthew chapter 18, verse 7. Woe to the world because of things that causes people to sin. Such things must come, but woe to the man through whom they come. And in verse 8 and 9 in this same chapter 18, verse 8 says, if your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life maimed or crippled than to have two hands or two feet and be thrown into eternal fire. And according to verse 9, and if your eye causes you to sin, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into the fire of hell. What Jesus is saying here to us is disciple. He is warning us about things that will cause the little ones to sin and us, the older ones, tempting them and neglecting or demanding them. You see, church, individuals or relationship that practice or act of, of activities that leads to sin should be stopped. Jesus says it would be better again to go to heaven with one hand than to hell with two, with both. Sin affects more than our hands. It affects our mind and it affects our hearts. Brothers and sisters, we as leaders in our churches must help our young and older brothers and sisters and even our new disciples from sinning. And when they do sin and stumble, we must learn to forgive them and stop trying to condemn them let them know that they can go to God and always ask for forgiveness 
because it matters to God when we are walking in this Christian journey to come to him and ask for his forgiveness. You see, Shiloh and friends, we are living in a world that is full of sins and corruption. And we don't even have to leave our homes to see the corruptions. All we have to do is turn on the television, the radio, the internet, and every social media that they have out there. And when our brothers and sisters commit these sins, just from following what they see or hear in social media, they will stumble and they will fall. But when they do, let us help them to not lose their faith in God. Let them know that God loved them and God will forgive them. We have to learn to forget about ourselves sometimes, church, and put our new disciples on high priority in our churches. Because when we are new disciples in the church, the devil will put all kinds of evil things in the disciples' mind, and they will find themselves listening to the devil, and they will go back into the world and commit sin after sin after sin. Let us walk with them until we see some growth in them and even with our older brothers and sisters. If we see a person committed sin, we should go to that person in private and speak to them in a loving way about their sins and tell them that forgiveness matters in their walk with God and that he forgives them and that he will also let us forgive them. Instead, church, what we do, some of us, we expose that person's sins to everyone. Matthew 18 and 15 says, If your brother sins against you, go and show him his fault. Just because the two of you in listening and they will ask to forgive them. We must not hurt the person with harsh word, but we must encourage them and ask them to repent. Ephesians 4 and 32 says it like this. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ, God, forgave you. We can also say that what really matters in our Christian walk with the Lord is found also in the Bible in Luke chapter 11, verse 4. Forgive us of our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us and lead us not into temptation. My shallow family and friends, you know that God does not forgive us just because we forgive others, but only because of God's grace and God's mercy. We must learn to understand about his mercy, and when we do, we will want to be like him. When we receive forgiveness of our sins, we will give it to others also. My question to you, if you are not willing to forgive, how can you say you are a child of the son of the living God? You see, Jesus forgave those who crucified him. According to Luke 23 and verse 34, Jesus said, Father, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. That was love for those who crucified him. We must be obedient to God's word when it comes to forgiveness, and that will teach us how to know and trust God that he will take care of every situation and he will get the glory. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, forgiving someone can be very painful, especially if it's someone that hurt us deeply and the pain is so hard to heal. But no matter how deep that hurt is, remember that forgiveness matters in our walk with the Lord. You see, our words and actions have strong consequences in the lives of others, whether for the good or the bad. We can cause our brothers and sisters to lose their hope and stumble and fall. When we don't forgive them, they will withdraw from the church and they will keep to themselves and do not allow anyone to get close to them. We must seek reconciliation and repentance. And when we do that, it will lead to restoration, not only in our churches, but in our personal lives and our families and friends. 
Think about how Jesus forgave us daily of our sin. And he does not throw it back into our faces like we do to others. We don't feel that we can forgive others when they hurt us. But with our faith and trust in God, we can do it, church, because nothing is impossible with God. All we have to do is believe and have faith. Think about a mustard seed. It is a little seed that grows. And if you plant it, it will grow bigger. And we don't need to keep praying to God to increase our faith. All we have to do is pray and ask God to use the little faith that we have. Point number two, faithfulness matters in our walk. Faithfulness matters in our walk. What is faithfulness? Faithfulness is dependability, loyalty, and stability. Particular as it describes God in his re relationship to human belief. That's according to Nelson Diction Bible. Faith that does not result in faithfulness will not accomplish God's work. It's okay to have the faith to do difficult, the impossible, but it's very important that we have the faith to even do the things that we are committed to do, and we must always keep up with our responsibilities. Because we are called God's servants, we must be faithful in our walk with him. If we commit ourselves to work in a ministry in the church, and we are called to do something for that ministry, we should keep our commitment, church. It takes faithfulness for us to carry out our duties, whether it's cooking a meal for the sick, caring for the sick, cleaning someone's home. All we have to do must have a good attitude when we're doing these things. We want God to be faithful to us, and that he is to us, church. But are we faithful to him when we don't do the things that we know that will please him? Some of us expect God to give us special reward when we help someone. But God does not owe us anything when we help someone. It is because of his grace and mercy we are able to show it to others. God give us grace and mercy every day, every day, when we don't even deserve it. And that's why faithfulness matters in our walk by doing the will of the Lord from our heart. Ephesians 6 and 6. Tell us, obey them, not only to win their favor when their eyes is on you, but like slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from our heart. If we are going to be faithful in our walk, let us keep his commandment, church. And we must serve him with a happy heart, not grudgingly. Let us be delightful to do his will. If your faithfulness matters in your walk, don't show it off inside of the church only. Show it off outside of the church. Show it off with your brothers and your sisters, with your neighbors and your friends. When you receive a phone call or an email or a text message from someone, and they ask you for help. If they need to go to the doctor, if they need to go to the grocery store, please don't say to them, I took you last week and the gas for my car is costly. You need to find someone else to take you. Yes, church, I know that gas is costly, but who bless you with the gas? Who bless you with the money to put gas in the car? Who bless you with the car? God did not bless you with that car just for you only. He blessed you to help others. He blessed you. If someone needs to get to point A or to point B, you are there to help them. That's why God blesses us with things, to help others, not to keep all the blessings for ourselves. You see, church, when I call them, my friends that I have here at Shiloh to help me in whatever I need, I know without a shadow of a doubt that their faithfulness matters in their Christian walk with the Lord. Why? Because whatever I ask for them to help me with, they're always willing to help me. They're always willing. And if they cannot help me, they will always find someone to help me. And that's what faithfulness matters. 
if we have obeyed God and show him that our faithfulness matters in our walk, we have done our duties and we should regard it as a privilege. I know sometimes when the burdens get hard, we don't want to be faithful. We want to know that God is always helping us. But sometimes we have to wait, church. We have to be faithful and wait on God because he will do it for us. But we must be faithful. Remember, we must be obedient to him. That's part of our faithfulness. I know that some of us, not in our church here, have been faithful in serving in our churches. And nobody says thank you. And we get upset. And we get angry. But the Lord sees and he knows that you have been a faithful servant in your walk. And he will bless you. Because we are God's servants. Anything the Lord asks us to do, we must do it. Let me tell you, there's a difference between choosing to serve and choosing to be a servant. You see, when you choose to serve, you are in charge because you decide who you will serve and when you will serve. But you know what, Shiloh and friends? When we are servants, we give up the right to be in charge. Servants should give up all of their rights. If we have to serve, just do it with a good heart. Some of us only want to be a servant to do what we want to do. Please write these three questions down and answer them for yourself. One, is there anything you won't do for the Lord? Is there anything you won't do for the Lord? Two, is there anyone you won't serve? Is there anyone you will not serve? And three, is there anyone you will not permit to serve you? Is there anyone you will not permit to serve you? If you answer yes to any of these three questions, you are not a servant. You are not a servant. Now let's go to point three. Thankfulness matters in our walk. Thankfulness matters in our walk. Thankfulness is showing or feeling gratitude, an expression of appreciation and gratefulness. Please and grateful for what you have. You see, when Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem and traveling along the border between Samaria and Galilee, as he was going into a village, 10 men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Jesus, master, have pity on us. Jesus sent the 10 lepers to the priest before they were healed and they went in faith and Jesus healed them, all 10 lepers, but only one came back to thank him. Let me ask you the question, is that how we treat God in our walk? Do you return with a thankful heart and thank him for what he has done for you? When we put our trust in God, even before we can see the evidence that it will work out in our favor, we must thank him because that's what God expects of us. Some people have an ungrateful heart towards God. Are you one of those? Are you one of those like the nine lepers who gave God no thanks? We must understand that his grace and mercy is sufficient to us. God does not demand that we thank him, but he is pleased, church, when we do it. When Jesus gave us a new start in our walk, we should have a personal song of praise in our heart, letting it flow out of our mouth, my sisters and brothers. Don't take your blessings for granted and fail to thank God, who is the giver of all of our blessings. Psalms 107, verse 8. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds to men. Brothers and sisters, no matter what is going on in our lives, just remember that thankfulness matters in our walk. Yes, I know from my own personal life experiencing 
that sometimes when we're going through, it's very hard to say thank you. It's very hard to praise him. But we must learn to open our mouth and say, no matter what we're going through, Lord, I am thankful. I have a grateful heart, not only for healing my body, not only for the material things, but for salvation and for the promise of eternal life. Lord, I thank you that you went on Calvary's cross and you shed your blood and you died for me. And I am grateful, Lord, in my closing Brothers and sisters, don't forget the sermon title, What Really Matters in Our Christian Walk with the Lord. Forgiveness matters in our walk. Learn to forgive those who hurt you. Give it to God and leave it there. Faithfulness matters in our walk. Be faithful in all you do for the Lord. You will receive your reward one day. And thankfulness matters in our walk. Always remember to praise him, to honor him, to worship him, to glorify him for all of your blessings. Not only the blessings of today, but the past blessings, the blessings that he has sent upon you. Thank him because he is mighty good. Too often we are content to enjoy the gift, but how we forget the giver. We are quick to pray, but slow to praise him. Every child of God should cultivate the grace of gratitude. It only opens the heart to further blessing, but it glorifies and pleases the Father. I said to us, let us thank him for his mercies are new every day. Every morning, every day, every hour, God's mercies is good. Thank him because he's our provider, Thank him because he's our everything. Thank him that when we don't see the way out, he makes a way. Thank him, thank him, thank him. Just give him praise. Give him all the glory. Give him all the honor because God is so worthy. He is worthy. We ought to be praising him. We ought to be praising him not only on Sunday mornings. We ought to praise him seven days a week. We ought to praise him in the morning. We ought to praise him in the evening. We ought to praise him at night. We ought to praise him, church, because God, our God, our Savior, our Father, he is, he is worthy, worthy, worthy to be praised. Nobody should have to tell you to praise the Lord for him. Nobody. You ought to praise him for yourself. You ought to stop and think about what I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me. We ought to be saying hallelujah to your name, God. Thank you, God. You are awesome. We love you and we bless your name. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, I give you thanks and praise because you are so good. You are so good, Master. What can I say but thank you? Thank you for this word. I pray, Father, that someone heard this word. And if they don't know how to be faithful to you, if they don't know how to forgive others, Father, help them, oh God. Teach them faithfulness. Teach them, Lord God. And oh God, we thank you because when we go to you, and we have sinned, and we have done things that are not pleasing to you, Lord. You forgive us, and help us, Lord, to forgive our brothers and sisters when they offend us. Now, Master, look upon the sick, those in the hospital, nursing home, oh God, those that are going through bereavement, Father God, there are so many, God. Comfort them, Lord. Wrap your arms around them, oh God. A special anointing and blessing upon Pastor Vernon B. Lewis Colleton. Strengthen him, oh God. Keep him in your care, God, as he's doing your will, day after day after day. Be with him, oh God, as he travels the dangers and busy highway. Be with our entire shallow family. And Lord, Someone that does not know you that is watching or listening to this word on YouTube or wherever they are. I pray that they will hear the word, Jesus save. Jesus save and he wants to save them. He wants to save you, my brothers and sisters. All you have to do is open up your mouth and confess them and believe that you are saved. And just know that one of our shallow 
disciples, ministers will contact you. All you have to do is just look at the website and get the information and reach out to us. We love you, Lord. We bless you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us for our midweek service. We pray the message you just heard will bless you in a mighty way. Please share our Shiloh Baptist Church YouTube channel link with all of your family and friends so they can be blessed as well. Now, you have the opportunity to bring your tithes and offerings to the storehouse as God has asked faithful believers to do. Just go to shilohbc.org forward slash give or send a text to the number on the screen or you can mail your offering into the church or stop by the church to drop it off. Just remember, God loves a cheerful giver. Join us each Sunday at Shiloh for Sunday school at 9 a.m. and Sunday worship service at 10 a.m. We would love for you to join us in person. If that is not an option for you, you can participate virtually as well. Then join us virtually each Wednesday for midweek service and Wednesday night Bible study. Here at Shiloh, we are a Bible preaching, Bible teaching church with a focus on saving souls. Remember that Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 tells us, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Until we meet again, always be blessed.